Hey, what's going on, guys? If you're watching this right now, you're probably watching on replay. So do me a favor, you're watching on replay. Scroll down below, type the word replay down to the chat. Otherwise, I want to introduce myself and I want to welcome you to uh, Traffic Sales and Profit, aka TSP Lunch and Learn. My name is Lamar Tyler. I'm the creator and founder of Traffic Sales and Profit. We help entrepreneurs do three things, drive more traffic, convert more sales, and grow the amount of profit in their businesses. And every week we have a special lunch and learn situation. And what this situation is, we bring you the top experts and we talk about all different realms and aspects of business all for free. This is this is this top notch content that you get to get for free so that we can help you take your business where it's the next level. So we have a very special topic today. It's a little bit different, but it's one that we want to talk about as we talk about in the craft in the on excuse me, on the path that you've not just um, making money, but how do you exponentially increase the amount of money that you make? How do you get money in and turn that money and revenue into actual wealth? That is what we're talking about today. But before we get there, I want to know who's in the room. So do me a favor. I need you to type your name, where you're from, right? Two things, your name, where you're from, and in addition, um, your business into the chat. Your name, where you're from, and your business into the chat. And it's in a moment, we're going to bring on our very special guest. While you're doing that, this is what I also want you to do. Once you get your name, where you're from, and your business into the chat, I want you to share this out, right? I want you to like it. I want you to heart it. I want you to share this out on your page because there are other entrepreneurs just like you, just like you that need to get a hold of this information. And it's terrible when you're trying to give something secondhand, you're trying to tell a story that you heard, you want to share information that you heard or strategies that you heard. It won't be the same. So we need you to share this on your page right now so that you can share with your community insights and information that can help them level up and take them to where the next level in their business. All right. So real quick, in your name, where you're from, and your business name, I want to make sure we got some of those down. And as we do, I also want to, um, again, encourage you to join us every week here in Traffic, Sales, and Profit on the TSP Facebook page as we do these Lunch and Learns. All right. Awesome. And I see people coming in. I see y'all dropping names down into the chat. Um, awesome. Again, like I said, if you're just joining, right, want your name, where you're from, and your actual business as well. Your name, where you're from, your business, so we can give you a shout out. Um, Wow, so we've got a good, decent amount of people on already. Um, awesome. Want to make sure y'all are here tuned in. It's a great conversation we got today. So I want to make sure y'all are tuned in and ready to go by the time we bring our special guest in. Um, awesome. What's up, Tanika uh, from DMV Black Filmmakers Academy? Uh, glad to have you here, right? I see other people coming in. Awesome. All right. So this is what we're going to do, guys. I want to share with you who we have today, because today we have a good friend of mine, and this guy is the expert, right? Not an expert, not a expert, the expert when it comes to real estate. Today, we're joined by Keto J. Johnson. He's an accomplished real estate broker, CEO of Buy and Sell, Inc., and the Amazon bestselling author of Real Estate Wealth, Remove the Guesswork from Investing and Create a Six-Figure Strategy. Keto specializes in teaching others how to create generational wealth through principles of real estate investing and entrepreneurship. He's a licensed broker in Georgia, Florida, and Alabama, and his stellar career spans over 20 years and boasts involvement in over 1,000 real estate transactions. Y'all get that number. Type that number down to the chat if you're paying attention. 1,000 real estate transactions. He has served as an acquisition agent and broker for the Blackstone Group's Innovation Homes, one of the largest single-family hedge funds in the country, and as part of the six largest Keller Williams team in the world. A brilliant and trustworthy businessman with a heart for teaching, he regularly hosts events designed to educate aspiring investors on understanding the market and investing wisely. I'm excited for him to come and tell you guys about um, what real estate investing looks like specifically for entrepreneurs, and as you'll learn over the next few minutes. Keto is one of the best when it comes to breaking down complex, right, um, um, complex thinking and strategies and ideas around real estate into everyday terms that everybody can grab. So make sure you got your pen, make sure you got your paper. This is a conversation you normally would have to pay a lot, right, to learn from Keto, but guess what? He's doing it today on Lunch and Learn for free. So make sure you're ready to learn. Um, make sure you share this out on your page. Do me a favor, if you're ready, type ready down to the actual chat right now. All right, uh, Keto, can you come on in? Hey, Lamar. Hey, Keto, excited to have you here, man. Thanks for joining us again. Oh, it is definitely my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, no problem at all, right? So um, today, right, we asked you to come and we wanted to talk about real estate investing for entrepreneurs. And you know, like since I've mentioned something I, I've, I've talked about uh, with you, right? Um, and you know, I've, I've been to some of your events. Kiddos does amazing events every month um, here in the Atlanta area uh, for um, people that are interested in real estate investing. Um, I've asked you some things, right? I've said, Keto, like, like what about people that um, 
that don't have money, right? But they got time. I said, Keto, what about people that are busy entrepreneurs that got money, but the last thing they want to do is out walking properties and dealing with uh, general contracts and all that kind of stuff. And you've, you've told me all these things over the years, so I'm excited for you to share it with the group today. Um, but, but let me ask you this before we, we even get to your strategies and the breakdown. Um, is real estate something that, that entrepreneurs should seriously be looking at and why? Uh, I absolutely think so. One, one thing about real estate that I really appreciate is uh, most most uh, wealthy individuals have earned their money in real estate. But the, the flip side of that is those wealthy entrepreneurs who did not necessarily earn their wealth in through real estate know that the way to preserve it, to pass it on, uh, it, the best way to do that is through real estate investment strategies. So you have your high net worth, uh, your high earners that use real estate as a secondary vehicle uh, to build and expand their, their portfolio of wealth. And so I think every entrepreneur should consider real estate as, as, a, as a viable vehicle to grow their, their worth. I love it. So today we're talking about uh, real estate investing for entrepreneurs, right? And we had a few things that we kind of wanted wanted to kind of talk over. And one of the first things we said we would talk about and mention is help people try to figure out what, what kind of investor they are, right? Can, can you talk a little bit about what that, what that means and how people kind of figure that out? Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of times when people think about real estate investing, they usually equate it to something they know somebody else is doing. So if they know somebody who's flipping property, they assume that that is the sum total of real estate investing. And that is just one of many, many different strategies. Uh, for the purpose of today's conversation, we're specifically talking to entrepreneurs. So the assumption is uh, our audience uh, is building wealth, doing something else. They're passionate about something else. They're actively daily engaged in something else. And so real estate then just becomes a secondary vehicle. Uh, so the primary distinction, uh, back to your question, Lamar, is a person has to first decide what type of investor are they. Are they a passive real estate investor or are they an active real estate investor? An active investor is an individual who is going to be involved in the day-to-day -day grind. So if we're using the fix and flip example again, they're going to be out meeting with contractors and managing a project and managing budgets, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas a passive investor is going to employ or bring someone on their team to do all of the management for them. So they, they are investors from a distance, as it were. And so for entrepreneurs, most entrepreneurs who are doing something else are better suited for passive investment strategies. All right, I love that. So um, the thing I love about that when you talk about it, right, is I think going back to what you first said, most people don't even realize that that's an option. I think a lot of times, like you said, right, what we see on every time we turn on HGTV, right, is uh, I'm going a, I'm to a buy low, I'm going to fix it up, um, I'm going to do a uh, open house on one day, and then somebody going to come to that open house and buy it that same day. And then right. 30 minutes later, I have made $40,000. <laughs> exactly. doesn't happen like that. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> yeah, right. But but I, I love the fact that, um, you know, one thing you talk about is you actually can be a passive investor. Y'all, this is this is literally one of the questions I asked Keto. I remember we were um, at a, a TSP Mastermind event. TSP, uh, Keto's one of our Mastermind members. We had a TSP Mastermind event. We sat down. And I was like, Keto, look, I ain't trying to fix up no houses, man. I ain't trying to flip nothing. Like, how can I get money in the game and not do that? Then he kind of shared with me. Uh, this piece about being uh, actually passive. Um, uh, so, all right, so you talked about ways of passive, right? Um, how do people figure out like what kind of strategy makes sense for them? So I often tell people like you, you really have to determine how much time you have. Now, if you're an entrepreneur like most of us, you, you may not have a lot of extra time. So there are really three questions you have to ask yourself. What, what's your time like? What's your money like? What's your credit like? And based on how you answer those three questions, then determines what strategies make the most sense. Again, if you don't have a lot of uh, a lot of time, then you're probably going to be more suited for some passive investment strategy. And so, then if if that's the case, then the other two questions outside of time is what what's your money look like? How much cash do you have to bring to the table uh, for for acquisition of property? Uh, you don't necessarily have to have 100% of the acquisition. So 
when you ask yourself, how much money do I have, right? There's no really right or wrong answer to any of these three time money credit questions. But the way you answer them determines how you, how you move forward. And so again, if you, you ask yourself, how much money then do I have? I'm a passive investor. How much money do I have? If I don't have enough to acquire a property in full, then we need to talk about leverage. How can I bring what I do have to the table, the cash that I do have to the table, and maybe partner with other entrepreneurs, partner with other friends and family members, or partner to get uh, some conventional or even non-conventional types of financing uh, to, to get deals done. So uh, again, the three questions are, what's my time like? What's, what's my money like? And then what's, what's my credit like? So the, the credit piece uh, is important for long-term passive investors uh, because the assumption is that the long-term passive investor is going to maybe be a landlord. And so if you're going to be a landlord and you don't necessarily have the cash to pay for the house in full, you're going to leverage it. You're going to leverage what you do have with long-term financing. So the better your credit standing is at the time you take out long-term financing, the better your rates are, the better your terms are on those uh, long-term loans. All right, I love it. Y'all getting this? I'm taking notes. I got my pen in my hand. I'm taking notes as we go through this, right? So y'all heard those three, right? Time, money, and credit. Hey, hey uh, if you're just joining us again, my name is Lamar Tyler, creator and founder of Traffic, Sales, and Profit. We're joined here today by Keto J. Johnson um, from Buy and Sell, Inc., right, located here in Atlanta. He is a real estate expert, right? I'm going to put a capital E in expert is the truth. Are y'all enjoying this so far? For my folks who's been on, you enjoying this type of yes down to the chat. Make sure you share this conversation on your pages. Make sure you give us some hearts as we go throughout this, because this is good so far. All right, um, I'm looking through, right? We got a lot of comments. Um, I saw uh, Dino, what's up, Dino? Dino said, I use real estate to reinvest and diversify our e-commerce profit. Um, I love that. Uh, what's up, Chanel? We got Loretta watching. What's up, Ryan's watching. Um, uh, Tamiza watching, hey. Um, a lot of folks on, what's up, Quay watching? Everybody's checking in. If you got questions for Keto, go ahead and drop those into the chat as well. Um, Cause we got one or two more things to talk about. Then we're going to come into the questions in the uh, comment box and make sure we want to answer all the questions you guys have as we walk through this. All right. So they've come up with the uh, primary distinction of what type of investor they are, Keto, right? They said, all right, you know, um, I don't have maybe time, but I have some resources and money from my business now that I've generated. I want to become a passive investor. Um, they've tried to, you know, figure out a strategy, right? Um, and they've looked at time, money, and credit, and they try to figure out a strategy. Uh, and what should they do next? Like, what's the, what's the third step they should kind of take a look at? Well, the next thing then is when we talk about strategy for the, the entrepreneur who is a passive investor, uh, and whenever we talk about real estate strategy, understand there's a lot of them, like there's a lot of them. So what we're talking about right now are the, the most common or the top, uh, the top tier level. Right. So the two that often make the most sense for a passive entrepreneur investor uh, are going to be landlording. Again, like we spoke about earlier, you're going to buy property and you're going to hold it for long term rental with the with the hope and uh, the plan of receiving monthly passive income off of that investment. And then secondarily, that that property appreciates over time. So what you buy for 100,000 today is very likely gonna be worth 103, 104, 105, maybe even more depending upon what area of the country you're in a year from now and every year after that. So I love, and I, I say this often, I love real estate investing because it is the only investment that I personally know of that, that you can buy, that you can own, that somebody else can pay for, and you reap all the long-term benefits of having the ownership of it. And that's what being a landlord does. You acquire this property, somebody else pays the rent. When they pay the rent, you pay the mortgage, you pocket extra cash. If you do it right, you pocket extra cash. You're appreciating, the property is appreciating over time. You're adding value uh, to your net worth. And ultimately, you have something that, that you can leave to your children and to your children's children. So that's, uh, that's one primary uh, goal and strategy for passive investors. Yeah. Now, for a passive investor, um, 
you know, uh, even though they're not as involved as, as an active investor, they still, it's still things that need to be done. They still need to make sure they surround themselves with the right people. So they still kind of need to develop a team, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that then being the, the final and most, one of the most important points is make sure that you're investing and that you understand that you can't invest as an island to yourself. As with any type of business endeavor, the team is what makes the difference. And so as a passive investor, uh, you need to make sure that you have the right real estate agents or brokers around you, uh, the right lenders around you, the right attorneys around you, uh, the right contractors around you. And with each one of these, and I, I want to make sure that I make this point, with each one of these, with your agents, with your lenders, with your attorneys, with your contractors, you have to know that all of these individuals are just like doctors, right? They have areas of specialty. You don't want as a real estate investor necessarily, necessarily to be working with a real estate agent or broker who does not have some specialty when it comes to investments because the language is completely different. Assisting you with finding a home that you're going to live in is a completely different process to assisting you with finding a property that you anticipate holding for long-term wealth and appreciation. And it's the same with, an, a lender, with a lender, with an attorney. You have to make sure that you are connecting with, networking with, and bringing on your team individuals who are specialists when it comes to real estate investing. And, and my personal preference is don't just tell me you're a specialist but show me that you're actively doing the thing that you're going to help me do. Right. So I, I like for my lender to be an investor too, my agents, my, my attorneys to also be real estate investors themselves. Mm. All right. I like that. that that's, a, that's a great tip. Um, and kind of get to the bottom of that. You know, I think a lot of times uh, we run to people and they say, you know, we say, Hey, you know, what, what kind of um, uh, real estate you experience? And they say all of it. You know, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> hey, you know, um, you know, they they uh, tell you they specialize in vacation rentals. And you like, I'm looking for a house. Yeah, I can do that for you. And looking for a commercial property, I can do that too, right? And right. and they trying to grab everything. So I like how you talk about finding people that, that niche down a specialist. And and I like a lot about that tip. Um, actually, seeing if they actually invest themselves. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it makes a difference because that then they understand the language, right? They, they, they know what your overall goal is because they've got similar goals themselves and they're able to, I can't tell you the number of deals that, that made it to the closing table just because my attorney knew what he was talking about beyond the, 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 the law in the book, but he knew the language that my wholesalers and other investors were speaking. Awesome. Hey guys, if you have any um, questions for Keto at all, do me a favor. Um, uh, uh, drop your questions into the comments now. Um, I got a question, Keto, and I'll come to the comments. And then Keto also has um, something very special for you guys um, that he's going to share with you. It's totally free. Um, so make sure you stick around for that. Um, make sure you share this out as well. Hey, Keto, so let me ask you. Early on, like when you first started the conversation, you talked about real estate really being a tool for entrepreneurs to preserve their wealth and be able to actually pass it down. Mm -hmm. um, uh, can you talk about that just a little bit? Some people saying, well, you know, what, what does he mean by that? Or, or how, how can I use... Um, real estate to actually pass down, you know, the wealth I generate in my business. Right. So you, you, you can take the wealth from your business, the profits from your business, and you can then reinvest them in real estate um, avenues, right? You can acquire property. That's going to be a part of your family from generation to generation. You have something then that you can now pass from one generation to the next. Uh, another thing, and you know, it, it, it would take a whole nother conversation to really break this down, uh, but we come to a place in our businesses as entrepreneurs where we have this excess cash uh, and there are qualified retirement plans and packages that we can create within our organization to, uh, to, to move profit that we don't necessarily have to pay uh, taxes on, at least especially in that moment. And then when you move it to those qualified vehicles, then you can take that money and uh, self-direct it. They're self-directed types of accounts. So you can move it from, from the profit side of your business to a qualified retirement plan that you as the owner or CEO have benefit of. And then you can self-direct that money that you have moved into real estate investing uh, vehicles. I love it. You know, and that, that was the next thing I was about to ask you about, um, it's just also, um, you know, I don't think a lot of entrepreneurs realize like the massive tax advantages 
yes. of real estate, exactly right, to, um, uh, to actually be able to use that as, as a um, uh, avenue not to pay as many taxes back um, with the actual profits they make in their business as well. So I love the fact that you mentioned that too. Yeah, absolutely. Our tax law in our country is written in a way that real estate investors, real estate entrepreneurs win. And that, that's just the way it is. And we can love or hate our administration. This is not that conversation today. Uh, but it caught one, of the, one of the advantages to this guy that most of us dislike is the fact that as real estate investors and entrepreneurs, uh, we, we just have, we have added benefit. There we go. I love that. You know, I was just reading a book last week called um, Tax-Free Wealth. And like a, a, a big chunk of that book was about real estate. Pretty much every strategy in it somehow tied back into real estate and how you need to have properties that you can depreciate. You need to be using, um, you know, leverage, um, you know, through real estate properties and, and so many things. So guys, this is a very important conversation. If you haven't thought about real estate, you haven't thought about moving into it, um, you know, and you've been focused on your business, that's cool. But as you begin to grow that business, grow wealth around your business, now is the time for you to start to, um, you know, connect with people like Keto, professionals that give education and have information so that even if you you think you're not ready now, you can begin to prepare your mindset and learn through the process. Um, so Keto, I know you had something um, that we're going to offer free to our audience. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So I have a, a, a checklist of what I call how much house can I flip? So, you know, everybody is in the HGTV, right? We, we love all these shows, you know, love it or list it, fix or flip, flip or flop, all these shows. Uh, so I put together this resource to assist a person with uh, really considering, is flipping right for you? And if so, how do I determine what I can flip and what makes sense? Uh, so you can go to, it's a bit.ly link. It's bit.ly forward slash BMWK flip. Now the B, the M, the W, and the K is all capital, all capital. So it's bit.ly forward slash BMWK flip, F-L-I-P. Yeah, and guys, we'll drop that down into the actual um, chat as well. We'll put the um, comment down to the chat so you got the link and you can just click on it to get there. All right, Keto, I got a question from uh, Marcus. Marcus says, where can I get funding for a first-time investor with little money? Uh, so you can, want, talking about the team again, uh, you want to make sure whatever city you're in that you are actively networking with individuals uh, uh, who are investors and that you are connecting with your local real estate investment associations. Um, in those associations, there you will find individuals who, uh, who specialize in folk working with, um, working, work, lending money to real estate investors, lending money. To real, so again, long story short, network, look, search local real estate investment associations. Uh, also, if you, you go to my site, drop me an email, I can connect you with some individuals who provide lending for first time investors. Yeah. And can you give me your site again, Keto? Uh, it's Keto. Okay, so I don't have it. Yep. It's KetoJJohnson.com. K I T O J Johnson.com. All right. I love it. I love it. Guys, you got any last questions? Go ahead and drop those in. Um, right now, um, while we're waiting. Hey, Keto, while, while we're um, seeing some additional questions, let me ask you this, because um, I think a lot of people look at real estate, but they're always um, afraid to get started, right? And I'm sure you see a lot of people that probably come to the events, but they never pull a trigger or um, yes. they're kind of stuck. And I'm sure some people now watching that are kind of in that space, right? They, they've um, been motivated. They've read different books. They've been to seminars, but they haven't kind of done that first transaction yet. What would you say to somebody like that, that that knows they want to get into real estate, but it's just kind of stuck a little bit? Uh, I would say the first thing you got to do is decide on your strategy. Decide on your strategy. One of the reasons people never get started is because they're just all over the place. You know, one day they're looking at this particular option as a strategy. The next day they're over here. One day they're on this particular YouTube video. The next day they're reading this guy's book, right? So you need to first decide what strategy makes sense for you based on where you are in your life right now. We didn't, we didn't mention uh, my book, Real Estate Wealth, uh, but that was why I wrote that book, Real Estate Wealth, because when a person reads that book, my goal is that by the end, you can clearly articulate this is a strategy that, that I need to start with. 
So once you identify the strategy, then you spend your time educating yourself around that particular strategy. And I found that m when a person does that, they're more likely to get off the fence and, and to take action. And then of course, you know, other things like, like team and having the right professionals or coaches around you, all of that is important too, but primarily what strategy makes sense? Be clear on that. And then you can build your vision from that point. All right. I love it. Uh, hey, Dino had a question. Dino said, would you recommend using your own money or using other people's money for leverage on flip deals? Okay. So uh, I've heard different schools of thought concerning this. Uh, I personally do both uh, because and, and maybe that's because it's just like a, a drug to me because the more resources I have that I can bring to the table, whether they're mine, my mama's, my cousins, my lenders, my attorney, doesn't matter. If I can bring more resources to the table and buy more houses and deals, then I want to do that. Um, so, so, you know, the recommendation is this. Uh, what is your level of comfort? What is your level of comfort? The reality is if you evaluate the deal properly, Right. If you buy it right as an investor, you always make your money when you buy it, never when you sell it. So if you buy the property right, then you've you uh, you've got enough room in the property not to be so concerned about what if this deal goes sour. When real estate deals go sour and people ultimately lose is either cost. Well, the bottom just fell out of the market, which, you know, we that was what it was. But that doesn't happen often. What what happens more times than not is people force a deal. They try to make the deal happen. The numbers are tight, but they, they want to do it so bad, you know, for whatever reason, they just want to do it. And they force the deal and they force the numbers. And the moment a small hiccup comes, that small hiccup is a huge hiccup because the numbers were tight in the beginning. But if you buy a property right, it doesn't matter where the cash comes from, even if it's on your, even if it's your personal cash, because you can get out if you need to, because the numbers were right when you bought it. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I think it totally did. Um, that was great. Um, also, guys, uh, Keto just mentioned his book, uh, Real Estate Wealth. I actually just dropped a link down to the chat for the book as well. Um, yours truly, I actually wrote the forward for it. Um, so hopefully you can make it past that part to actually get into the real book. But but I'm telling you, there's nuggets on top of nuggets inside of the actual book itself. Um, and, yep, and Dino said it made sense. So he said, thank you. Um, all right, and we'll, we'll do this last quote. Dino has another good one, so I want to end on this one. He said, if we want to get started as passive investors, can we invest in some of your deals? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, knew, knew the answer, you know, I knew the answer to that one. You, you just told Dino that you're looking for all resources. You want, to, you right. want all resources <laughs> off the table. <team. laughs> yes, absolutely. So we are actually working on some things to create something on a large scale where individuals can invest in what we're doing, uh, specifically some things that have to do with the opportunity zones, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of things in the works right now that we're excited about and, be, and we'll be talking about um, in the coming weeks or months. But the answer to your question is, is yes, just drop me uh, an email, go to ketojjohnson.com and we can talk about what is currently on the table. All right. Y'all, um, so there we go. Another dynamic lunch and learn. Um, again, right, you want to get a hold of uh, Keto Blessed with a free resource. His uh, How Much House Can I Flip checklist uh, is bit.ly forward slash capital BMWK lowercase flip. The link is actually in the actual comments. We have it pinned to the top so you can see it. Hey, if you watch this on replay, do me a favor, type the word replay down below, leave comments. We'll come back and answer those as well um, and engage with you as well. Hey, Keto, um, thanks again for joining us today. Any last words? Uh, I just want to say to you again, thank you. Uh, this is always an opportunity, a great opportunity for me to share with your audience. And to those who are watching, I want to challenge you to get started, just to, to do something. If, if you've not yet chosen your strategy, make that your goal. Uh, educate yourself around the options that are available. Rewatch re this video, get the book, and choose a strategy. Uh, step number one. Then step number two, uh, do something because, you know, it's been said, you know, the best time to invest in real estate was 30 years ago. The second best time to invest in real estate is right now. So do something right now. All right. I love that guys. All right. Um, we
We want to uh, thank everybody again. Hey, next week we're joined by um, Dino and Heather Cummings of Curl Kit. So you do not want to miss this on August 13th. Make sure you check us out here on the Traffic Sales and Profit Facebook page. On Facebook, again, my name is Lamar Tyler Crater and founder of Traffic Sales and Profit. And thank you for joining us on another TSP Lunch and Learn. Thanks a lot, Keto. We'll see you soon, man. Thank you.